work for seed labs, otherwise known as the uh, remote DNS cache poisoning attack lab. So I'm just going to dive right into VMware setup. So this is the three machines that we have. We have the attack machine, Apollo DNS, and Vacuum. And here are each of the IP addresses. They're all on the same NAT for the sake of example. But what we can just uh, assume that the attacker is remote. They're not on the same network as these two. And also just to show the uh, Kaminsky attack visually. So basically how it works is the attacker would send a DNS query to the vulnerable DNS server that we kn that the attacker knows that doesn't exist. So in this case, we're going to use just 5as.example.com. And because we know that doesn't exist, uh, we know that the DNS server is going to ask uh, the name server for example.com asking for the IP address of whatever we just asked for. But what the attacker can do uh, in this case is when the attacker sends an initial uh, query, the attacker can quickly send the spoofed answer, so a spoofed packet basically, before this the real answer comes in. Now the reason why this works uh, is because um, when you send a DNS query to the DNS server Apollo, uh, it also has the uh, ID in the uh, packet and the ID is only I think it was 16 bit long. So what the attacker can do is, is really just flood a lot of spoof answers hoping uh, that it gets an ID, basically a collision in the ID because it, it's not really, it's, it's only 16 bits long. And because of, because of how that works also is, uh, I think also the birthday paradox. So the attacker only needs to send like a hundred, like hundreds of spoofed answers for a collision to happen. And if the attack is successful, uh, we get, the victim will get a spoofed uh, IP address for whatever that example.com with uh, ns.dns labattacker.net in the authority field. So just to quickly demo that, I'm just going to quickly show you the uh, IP addresses of each. Go. And before we start, I'm just going to flush the cache for Apollo DNS first. So we're starting off clean. And we're going to also restart this. Check that works. I'll also show you the uh, configuration files afterwards as well. But I'll just dive right in. And All right. So right here, I'm going to run spoof DNS first. So what's happening here is uh, this is the attacker IP address. This is the uh, Apollo DNS, the formal DNS server. So what's going to happen when I run this is it's going to flood. So if come back here. It's going to flood the victim DNS server with all these spoofed packets coming in. Now, the reason why I'm running this first instead of uh, sending the query first. I mean, I could, but like, I would have to be like very lucky or like quick, like really quick. Well, it, like it, it's not, I think it's not feasible to do, to send a query first and then run this. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do is run this first and then I'm going to send the uh, query that we know that this doesn't exist. Now, just to show you that it is running in the background, you can see all the spoof packets coming in. Coming in. So you see ns.dns.tablager.net uh, and see one for one, that's the IP address of Apollo. Now, I'm going to turn this off because it does get laggy during, during recording. And I'm going to get these two back. Right. So I'm just going to leave this running in the background. And when I do, when I send this in, so this is a DNS uh, query now, we're going to hope that we get a collision, and we do. And you see here the answer section, uh, 
one that one that one that this 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 isn't the real IP address for this like this doesn't exist. So we know we've successfully poisoned the uh, cache for Apollo DNS. Now to prove the impact of that, what I can do is well we know that this worked now. I don't have to keep this running. And over here, when I do dig for example.com, we're given this IP address instead of the real IP address. And we also have the spoof replies coming in. So this is the uh, all DNS. So we know that this has been poisoned now. And one last like one last time to show really show impact is this. So what's happening here? What I'm doing here is just uh, basically I'm just generating random strings from dev your random. I'm just using a like a hex dump really and piping it into awk so I get like, random strings dot example dot com and piping it to a bash so when I run this I can see everything in the zone example dot com has been basically poisoned and it's returning this IP address with this uh, authoritative uh, name server and lastly to prove that we've poisoned Apollo we can first dump the cache to our dump file and then if we actually take a look at that file which is in here we can see yeah there you go if I find there you go. All right. So we, we, we can see uh, we've successfully poisoned the DNS cache for Apollo right here in Authority, and we uh, also we can see here the uh, actual thirteen uh, root servers of the internet really. Uh, oh, no 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 no. And just to show you the. Uh, config files for each so we know that went ahead well and um, I just clear this all right so I'm first going to show you the setup for a DNS it's a DNS server really so I can go to etc bind not name that account the options and you can see uh, basically follow followed what the uh, spec sheet said for the lab and most is already done so we disable DNS security and then we have this port and then we have the dump file and then also at the same place we could show db.attacker so basically here is when the user sends a DNS query for example .com, to Apollo Apollo is going to reply with a uh, basically this um, saying uh, oh the name server for uh, example.com belongs to this IP address so if we go to the attack machine which is 140 right here we can actually see the IP addresses we gave that's said in the lab over here all right so when the user requests a DNS query for example.com it heads over to Apollo and Apollo uh, sends that request to us the attacker because it's been spoofed as you saw earlier and when that request comes in uh, we have this zone added in so we're oh example.com and then in this file we can actually see uh, the actual spoofed replies or like we can change this to basically anything we want so we can send the user to a malicious website or anywhere we like we own because we own the entire uh, example.com uh, zone basically so it's it's been poisoned and just to demo that one last time yeah so poison because it's still in the cache. I haven't flooded. Uh, 
when I uh, reset the cache, the uh, DNS cache for this, uh, this would clear up. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. And just to prove that I have the name server added for user and tagger. So bear with me. There you go. So for user and attacker, we have Apollo as the main DNS server or name server first in the line. And so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um. Oh yeah. No. For spoof DNS, um, I just use the uh, that GitHub uh, C program for a Kaminsky attack. So I'll show you what I changed in spookdns.c before I compiled it. Just full screen this. Hold on. Just to show you a color code, there you go. So just scroll down. You just change whatever parameters you, uh, you need. Like for example, like earlier on, uh, I actually used .net except of .com. Well, because of issues, I just kept it dot com anyways. And if we scroll down far enough, you can see yeah, there you go. So I think there's two two instances of this line right here about the unsigned integer, the IP address, the attacker IP address. So you just change whatever you need really. And then if you scroll all the way up, you can actually see uh, the instructions to compile. Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it, really. Um, terms of, yeah, I think that's, I think that covers everything. So sorry about the delay for the late upload because I was having problems with uh, recording this because uh, I actually this uh, the entire Mac actually froze on me the first time I've done this. So I'm glad that this actually worked now. So yeah, yeah. So bye.